Hello everyone, my name is Nurizati binti Hairul Zaman and my metric number is 203753. Agriculture is one of the most important component in our society. Farmers and ranchers produce the food and fiber we use every day. Soil is a critical part of successful agriculture and it is the original source of the nutrient that we use to grow the crops. The healthiest soil produces the healthiest and most abundant food supply. However, over the year, soil health is disturbed by contamination caused by the human activity. The cause of soil contamination is by industrial waste, deforestation, excessive use of pesticide and fertilizer, and also the garbage pollution. This activity will affect soil fertility and other consequences like damage the human health and impact the climate change. Thus, there are a way to solve soil contamination which is using the bioremediation. So, what is the bioremediation? Bioremediation is a process that altering environment condition to stimulate growth of microorganism to degrade or remove the target pollutant from the contaminated media uh, such as soil, water, air to provide clean water, air and healthy soil for future generation. The basic concept of bioremediation is pollutant is exposed to the environment and then the microbe in the environment will contact with the pollutant. The microbe learn how to utilize the pollutant for, for their energy, carbon and mineral source, which is known as mutation. Then the pollutant is break down uh, from the environment and remediate into a pristine state. Bioremediation can be practiced in two ways, which is in situ and ex situ. In situ means on site, while ex situ means off site. So, here there are different methods use of pollutant degrading bacteria in terms of bioremediation, which is using a bioventing, biosparging, cell bioaugmentation, gene bioaugmentation. Biopiling, biofarming, windrow composting, bioreactor, and biofiltration. So, today I'm going to talk about the bioventing. Bioventing is one of the methods used in biostimulation, which is, is it is in situ bioremediation process. Bioventing technique involves Control of stimulation of airflow by delivering oxygen to the unsaturated soil, also known as vados, via forced air movement to increase the oxygen or nutrient concentration in order to increase the bioremediation. It is increase the activity of indigenous bacteria or microbe. In bioventing, amendments are made by adding nutrient and moisture to enhance the bioremediation with the ultimate goal being to achieve microbial transportation of pollutant to a harmless state. In particular, bioventing have proved to be very effective in bioremediate release of petrochemical including uh, gasoline, fuel oil, and vitamin. The constituents of this compound are measured together as total petroleum hydrocarbon, also known as TPH. Then, bioventing also have been shown to dramatically reduce a subset of those compounds known as BTEX, which is benzene, Toluene, ethyl benzene, and xylene. Btex compound are amount of the most soluble or mobile and toxic. 
benzene is considered a human carcinogen. So let's take a look on the bioventing model that I have made. So yeah, this is this is the bioventing model that I have made. It's tiny one. So the box one represents the factory that released the pollutant or petroleum. So the first straw is uh, air injection pump and the middle one is soil gas monitoring and the second straw is, is vacuum pump so the vacuum pump uh, work as a vapor injection so the yeah the stone in the in the soil represent the microbe the microbe that will degrade the pollutant so this is the stone that i put in uh, into the soil to represent the microbe there are a uh, there are uh, colonies of microbe and yeah this is and the soil type uh the soil type i use in my model is a silt sandy silt sandy soil uh, it is free from impermeable layer and other condition that will disrupt the airflow so and the soil ph is 6.8 and the moisture content on the soil is uh, 55% and the soil temperature is 28 degrees celsius so the deep of the contaminated site from the underground water is uh, 10 feet and the last one is uh, background heterotrophic bacteria so there are more than thousand of heterotrophic uh, colonies bacteria in this contaminated site so it will degrade the pollutant if the bioventing is applied. Okay, so this is a factory that released the pollutant or petroleum. So the oil is to represent the petroleum that released by the uh, factory. So I will uh, pour the, the, the oil. So this factory will release a contaminate and petroleum into the environment and it will contaminate the soil so when a petroleum product is spilled it volatilize and disperse into the atmosphere or sink into the ground depending on its volatility and site condition so why i choose bioventing is because it uh, maximize the biodegradation and become a excellent option for treating petrochemical uh, petrochemical contamination so this is why I choose a bioventing to treat or solve my contamination site so the microbe has sufficient time to degrade the hydrocarbon and bioventing work best with uh, petroleum hydrocarbon of a relatively low volatility put another way uh, the contaminant uh, contaminant rate of volatilization should not exceed its rate of biodegradation so the low volatility also reduce the probability that air injection will uh, push toxic vapor into the surrounding uh, properties or structure so before we go further about the bioventing of degrading of uh, petroleum in the soil contamination so let's have a took a look on bioventing uh, evolution process so first step uh, is initial screening of bioventing effectiveness so this is uh, will allow you to quickly go whether bioventing is likely to be effective uh, moderate effective or ineffective so the second step is detailed evaluation of bioventing effectiveness to complete the detail 
of evaluation, you will need to identify specific properties like the soil type, which is its uh, clay or coarse grain. The coarse grain is uh, good because it's high permeability and the clay soil are not suitable because it have a lower permeability and it will not allow the water or air um, to um, to to the to the soil so next is a soil ph so the effective soil ph for microbial growth is 6 to 8 ph next the moisture content the moisture content suitable for the um, micro or bacteria to proper grow is 40 percent until uh, 80 percent so the excessive moisture will reduce the ability and metabolic process of the microbe so the third one the fourth one is soil temperature so the suitable soil temperature is 10 to 45 so the excessive uh, soil temperature will um, stun the microbial uh, grow so the dip of contaminated site from the underground uh, water must be more than 10 feet because if, if it is less than 10 feet uh, the spatial control like horizontal well and groundwater pumping need to be installed um, the background heterotrophic bacteria which is uh, the background heterotrophic bacteria must be more than a uh, thousand colonies um, because more bacteria will uh, initiate a uh, more degrading uh, pollutant and then the third step is an evaluation of the bioventing system design appropriately uh, it is defined based on the pilot study data that have been constructed before in the step 2 so the fourth step is evaluation of the operation operation and monitoring plan which will allow you to determine whether a remedial progress monitoring plan are appropriate or effective or is it uh, does not so after doing a bioventing evaluation process uh, I discovered that my soil contaminated site are suitable to do to install the bioventing. So this is uh, the air injection pump. It will inject more oxygen to the soil, and it will force uh, the so the oxygen to disperse around the contaminated soil, and it will uh, stimulate the growth of microbe. Uh, to break down the hydrocarbon compound which is a uh, organic compound containing only uh, carbon and hydrogen so uh, which are a main uh, constituent uh, in petroleum so the breakdown of hydrocarbon compound produce uh, carbon dioxide and water vapor the the vapor that uh, then will extract via vacuum pump in this via vacuum pump and before the air or vapor goes up it will uh, go to the activated uh, charcoal unit to purify whether there are impurities or pollutant that uh, that are not fully degraded so it will go to the charcoal unit to purify, uh, purify first. So, uh, to monitor all the parameters in the soil, here we have a gas, a soil gas monitoring system. So, the soil gas monitoring system, it will monitor the gas level in the soil, whether we need to add the oxygen or nutrient to stimulate the growth of microbes. And then the soil gas monitoring also will check or monitor the pollution level of the soil to see if uh, the degradation is happening or not. 
Here are some benefits of using bioventing for pollutant degradation. First of all, bioventing is inexpensive. It doesn't require high technology equipment to carry out the process. Next, the equipment used is readily available and easy to install. Moreover, it requires short treatment time, usually 6 months until 2 years under the optimal condition. Furthermore, it is easily combinable with other technologies like air sparging and underground extraction. However, there are some limitations and considerations should be think before we conduct the bioventing process. First is it limited to a certain contamination site. It is not applicable for certain site condition like low soil permeability, high clay content, and insufficient delineation of success condition. Second, we must make sure there are enough heterotrophic bacteria present in the contamination site. These microbes are the main character of bioventing. Without the microbe, there are no one to do the job of bioventing, even though the condition of the soil are suitable in terms of temperature, pH, and moisture. Thus, it is important to do a screening test to make sure the bioventing is suitable for using in certain contaminated areas.